Hey everyone, today we have a newly refreshed Audi Q5. Now, the segment that the Q5 fits in is pretty competitive. We have a BMW X3, Mercedes-Benz GLC and a Volvo XC60, all of which are strong choices and to keep up with the rivals, Audi refreshed the Q5 for 2021. Since the Q5 is Audi's best-selling model in the US, the German manufacturer had to take that under consideration and they were really careful with the changes. The styling seems to be a little bit more aggressive compared to the pre-facelift model, but it's still clean and simple and I have a feeling it's gonna age well just like the first generation. The car also received updated technology and a 12-volt mild hybrid system for improved fuel economy. Alright, so let's take a reasonably specced Premium Plus model for a spin and see how it drives. As someone who drives the second generation Volvo XC60 every day, I thought my car was the most comfort-oriented one in the segment. Guess what? The Q5 proved me wrong. It just took me a couple of miles behind the wheel of the Q5 to realize how refined it is in every single aspect. I'm talking about the suspension tuning, power delivery, NVH and the overall driving experience. And that should be no surprise because the Q5 is based on Volkswagen's MLB EVO platform, which also underpins high-end models such as a Porsche Cayenne, Bentley Bentayga or a Lamborghini Urus. What does it mean? You get an advanced multi-link suspension in the front and in the back, a lot of aluminum for weight reduction and extra enhancements to reduce the NVH. The ride quality, as I mentioned, is excellent. You barely feel any road imperfections even with the 20-inch rims that were fitted on my tester. When it comes to more spirited driving, you do get a lot of grip from Quattro all-wheel drive and the Q5 handles ok, but I wouldn't say it's very engaging. If you're looking for something that's gonna feel more sporty, check out the SQ5. Now the regular Q5 has two powertrain options, a 261 horsepower 45 TFSI, which is a mild hybrid, and a plug-in hybrid 55 TFSI, producing 362 horsepower and offering up to 23 miles of pure electric range. Even though we all hate turbocharged 4 poppers, I gotta admit, Volkswagen Group makes the best turbo force in the industry. The power delivery is incredibly smooth and 261 horsepower that my tester had is totally adequate for the Q5. Thanks to the mild hybrid system, the fuel economy is pretty reasonable. I averaged 24 miles per gallon in the city, 31 on highway and 26 combined. The car comes standard with Quattro all-wheel drive and a 7-speed S-Tronic dual-clutch which is a prime example of how a DCT should work. It shifts gears very quickly and smoothly no matter what driving mode you're in and unlike most units on the market, it's not jerky and stop-and-go traffic. Now, since the Q5 is gonna be your daily driver, you probably care about the driver assist features. The base premium model comes with automatic braking with pedestrian detection, front and rear parking sensors, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist and automatic high beam. If you go for the Premium Plus, you will get an adaptive cruise control with active lane assist and traffic jam assist and a 360 degree camera on top of that. Top of the line prestige trim gives you matrix LED headlights and a head up display with traffic sign recognition. Alright, so with that, let's jump inside the Q5 and check out the interior. Audi has always impressed me with their interiors and the one in the Q5 doesn't disappoint. All physical switches have nice click to them and feel high quality, the fit and finish is great and the materials are just as expected in a luxury car. Now the design is on a boring side, but if you like simplicity like I do, you will feel right at home. The ergonomics are great, you get physical HVAC controls and figuring out the core functions should take you no time. The facelifted model received an updated infotainment with bigger screen, which is now also touch sensitive. Unfortunately, the physical controller is gone, which means you have to rely on a touchscreen and it can be challenging to use it while driving. 
Having said that, the infotainment is very logical and intuitive. Audi's virtual cockpit is still the best implementation of digital gauges in the industry. It's very customizable, for example, you can display a full navigation map on the screen or eliminate unnecessary information that it shows. The optional Bang & Olufsen Audio produces a very good sound quality and it's well worth $950 that it costs. The front seats, they are on a firmer side but are comfortable and offer decent adjustability. However, being 6'2", I wish they offered more thigh support. Moving to the back, there is a good amount of legroom and headroom for adults and the rear bench also slides and reclines, so you can decide whether you want to have more room for your passengers or more cargo space. Speaking of, the trunk offers 25.9 cubic feet of space with the second row up and 54 cubic feet after folding it down. The refreshed Audi Q5 remains one of the best luxury compact SUVs and I consider it a benchmark for other models in the segment. It's exactly what an everyday car should be. Very refined, quiet, comfortable and practical. The styling might seem boring, especially if you get it in black, grey or white like most people will, but the good thing is that it's gonna age very well. Pricing starts at $45,600 for a premium model and $50,600 for a premium plus that I tested. If you wonder how I would spec out my Q5, click the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you later.